So um, we're going to go over art as entertainment. And uh, the art is entertainment section is, uh, or PowerPoint, I guess, is broken into three sections. Um, the first are artists who are inspired by the entertain entertainment um, or the entertainment world. Um, the next is artists who make things to entertain you. And then the last is artists who make artwork to entertain themselves. So in the first section, we have, um, uh, this is a Sam Taylor, Wood, who actually is a woman, this is uh, Sam Taylor holding this man, and uh, uh, she is a filmmaker and a photographer, and um, this is a video she did that is, uh, takes inspiration from, um, oops, I didn't want to play the video, okay, there we go, from this uh, famous sculpture, the Pieta, but she has a series of um, photographs that she did that are about leading men uh, crying. So they're stills from movies that show leading men crying. This is also her, uh, reminds me a little bit of like some of the photographers we looked at where uh, these were obviously manipulated. One of the reasons I say it looks like they were manipulated is because if you look at the shadows, they don't really match up. If you look at the chair and her, uh, you can see that. Um, that uh, also, I don't think people can really balance on the back of a chair like that either. But uh, so it reminds me of um, like Lee Wei and some of those that we looked at, but uh, still pretty cool looking. And this is also a video she did. This is um, Beckham, the soccer. Soccer player, yeah, and um, he had him sleeping. It's a video of him sleeping. So also about famous people. David Beckham, that's what I was thinking of. Okay, uh, this is an artist that was from the 60s and his name is Roy Lichtenstein. And um, he was one of the pop artists. And I think I've talked about pop art before. Pop art is short for popular art. And it's art that's derived from popular culture. So Andy Warhol had all of the soup cans. Um, uh, we looked at Clay's Oldenburg, who took regular items and uh, blew them up, remember, like really large, um, like the shovel that was you know, made to be really big or a huge clothespin. Um, he was also considered a pop artist. <clears throat> Andy Warhol is probably the most famous, but Roy Lichtenstein is also known um, for popular art. And the popular art that he copied was uh, everyday comics. <clears throat> so these are actually big oil paintings. Here's a little video. Uh, if you go back into the PowerPoint and click it, if anybody's into makeup, uh, this is uh, like a little tutorial for how to, how to create yourself to be one of the characters in uh, his paintings. So if you ever need a last minute arty Halloween costume, check it out. One of the things uh, that if you just notice like uh, comics are usually done in primary colors because it's cheaper to not have to mix all the colors. So the primary colors were the three basic colors, red, yellow, and blue. So you'll notice uh, that his paintings, let's see, let's go back. There we go. You'll notice they're almost all in the primary colors that we talked about, the red, yellow, and blue. Let's see. <clears throat> This next artist, his name is Mark Newport. And uh, the um, uh, entertainment that he draws from are superheroes, but he kind of plays with the idea of masculinity and superheroes because he knits these costumes and uh, uh, to be superhero costumes. And uh, instead of being imposing or scary, they're sort of droopy. <laughs> and he has, if you go to his website, uh, which I, I think I posted on uh, Moodle, he 
has some photographs also where he is playing with the idea of masculinity. He, it'll show him, there's a whole series of photographs showing him um, knitting in places that would considered to be um, kind of macho kind of places. Like there's one that he's sitting on a horse, kind of like a John Wayne, but he's knitting. And there's one he's at a game, uh, like a sports game and he's knitting in the bleachers and um, he's at a pickup bar uh like knitting and he's also uh dressed like a heavy metal rocker so things that um i guess i uh, men do knit but uh you know i guess it's not considered the height of masculinity at least that's the things he's you know kind of playing playing around with like masculine roles and anyway so these superheroes kind of have that same thing going so here they are hung in a gallery and um once again not too threatening. Another artist um, named Mark, this is Mark Bennett. And when he was a child, uh, he's a, he became an architect, but as a child, he said he watched uh, TV a lot. And um, so when he got older, he uh, thought it was fun to kind of reminisce about the shows that he watched. And so as after he became an architect, he went back and uh, drew uh, out what their homes would look like uh, as architectural blueprints. So <clears throat> if you've seen the Flintstones, um, they had their little rock house. <laughs> so here he is, he drew the design for that. This is a uh, show, I Love Lucy. Now, a lot of these are probably before your time, but so many of them um, have been played over and over again. So I think you're probably familiar with them. So this was their apartment in New York. They're famous for having Double, uh, single beds. So there's even the single beds in there. Ah, George and Louise Jefferson. Nobody ever seems to know this one. That was um, George Jefferson was a character on um, uh, All in the Family with Archie Bunker, if you ever heard of that. And then it was a spinoff and uh, they had a large condominium in New York. So this is uh, and his wife, Louise, George and Louise Jefferson. Batman, Bruce Wayne Manor, Wayne Manor. Looks like he included the Bat Cave over here. Frasier, uh, if, if you've seen Frasier, and they lived in Seattle, and they had a large condominium also. So here's his blueprint. I Dream a Genie was about a um, genie that lived in a bottle that an astronaut found. Um, and so this is uh, the bottle that she lived in <laughs> when she wasn't out wreaking havoc. Okay. Um, this is Mark, I mean, not Mark, this is Paul Pfeiffer. And uh, he, they mention him in your book. You, there is the chapter, uh, Art is Entertainment, in your book that I'm asking you to read. They talk about him in there more, but basically he picks epic moments in sports as his, the entertainment he draws from. But sometimes he kind of manipulates them and, you know, creates them. So here's one that sort of, like, you know, there's those moments I think people kind of wait for them when, you know, like in baseball, you hit a no hitter, or, you know, just it's the last minute and somebody makes a touchdown, all those things that are, you know, kind of exciting. That's what, you know, I think he likes to try to, to create that feeling. But read about him in the book and you'll uh, learn more about him. Um, uh, so that's his way of his, the popular media that or entertainment that he likes to uh, use as an art inspiration. Um, that's the entertainment that uh, he's inspired by. So now we are to the artists that like to make uh, entertaining things. So um, this is Jeremy Deller, and he's done several things. One of them is that he made uh, a bouncy castle out of Stonehenge. So in the very beginning of class, we looked at Stonehenge, the um, sculpture, I guess, architectural type sculpture. And so uh, he calls it sacrilege because uh, 
he already knew that there would be people who um, felt like it had this been a place where people had worshiped that, that he was uh, kind of desecrating it in a way. And so he wanted to include that in the title to kind of offset that. Uh, and so he would take this bouncy castle around where uh, kids can, can play on it or adults too. I, uh, I've included a video in here where you can see, you can see the bouncy castle. Um, there's some videos and you can see it going up and them playing on it. This is another one that he did. Um, when you go to a museum, you know how you're really prevented from touching things in the museums? Well, he worked with some a natural history museum where they would actually bring the items out of the museum and um, into like, this looks like some big box store. It's not, I don't think it's in another country, so I'm not sure where, but you know, could be like a Costco or a Walmart or something, um, that type of, type of store. And then here is somebody from the museum with an artifact that people can uh, actually handle with under guidance. <laughs> This looks like it's in, like in a mall background. And then another one he did, he said he applied for a grant for this and really didn't think he would get it. But the town he grew up in, um, he is from, I think, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's England, maybe, like, so, like England or Scotland, um, maybe Wales, but he, um, I think he is, Scottish himself. So, anyways, from uh, the United Kingdom area of the world. And uh, he, this was the town he grew up in, and they had um, a battle between, I think, the coal miners and uh, the police came in. And he was very young, but he remembered it. So he wanted to do a reenactment of this event. And uh, some of the people that were very young in that event uh, were still living in. Um, able to actually participate in it again in the reenactment. So they've filmed all this reenacting this, uh, this like uh, uprising that broke out in this small town. I think you get the feeling for that. Jody Mack, um, she, I, go, I put her website on here. You can go in there and she makes videos. And uh, you know how we made collages? Well, she uses papers and fabrics and does stop motion videos of them and puts them to music. And uh, some, of, uh, they're, some of them are, have topics and they're very clever. Um, the one that I really liked a lot was about... Uh, uh, called the saddest song in the world, but uh, they started charging for them. So unless you have a subscription, you actually have to pay for it. So, but there are quite a few free ones on the website. And um, if you want to take a look at hers where she uses, this would be like a, a shot from the video, but then here's, here's that one that was the saddest song in the world. And uh, so she actually does these um, kind of like collages turned into am animation set to music. Nick Cave, uh, there's a really good video on him. He is a Chicago artist and we, you know, we've talked about assemblage. He puts these, they call them sound suits. And uh, so part of it's like performance too because they also uh, have movement and people dancing and um, uh, his video um, shows how he makes those and, and what his inspiration was and shows him working with a group of high school uh, kids in Detroit where they actually put on a performance. So uh, please uh, watch that video, it's, it's on here. And this is what some of his work looks like. So these are all handmade, beaded, goes, I'll show you in the video, him going to like some thrift stores, collecting objects to uh, help build some of these. Here's the one that you'll see with the high school kids is uh, kind of like this. Them. There's somewhere they made horse costumes and dressed up like horses. This is the Campana brothers, and uh, they make um, 
furniture that is um, meant to entertain you. So here's a chair. Oh, oops. Go back here. Okay, wooden chair, but really wooden. Okay, here's uh, probably comfortable, I bet. Made out of stuffed animals, fish, or I guess they're mammals, huh? Mammal fish, <laughs> dolphins, and a crocodile or alligators. A big old hand. Um, the next artist, uh, this it brings us to our last category. Uh, these are quilters and this is uh, the quilts of G's Bend. See, if you look up on the map here, they show G's Bend, and this is uh, in Alabama. And uh, this started all the way back to the time of slavery, and uh, these women would make gather together to make these quilts. So even they made these beautiful quilts, but it was also entertained them because it was also uh, like a so, social occasion for meeting. And uh, these quilts are so large that when several people do them together, they uh, get done faster. So these look very much like abstract paintings. Here you can see, so it looks like this woman showing the younger woman how to do it. <laughs> but you can see how big they are and they're rolled up so you work on part of them at a time. But they uh, became famous. Uh, they're still to this day <clears throat> making these. Um, now they're sold like uh, fine art and they're shown in galleries and people collect them. And um, you can see how they look like some of the abstract paintings that we looked at. <coughs> Here they are displayed. So like, like I said, this falls under the category of making art, but art that they make. Uh, so you can see how they gather around. So it's a chance to socialize and make these beautiful things that are large. And uh, if you go into the PowerPoint, here's a short video of this woman who uh, talks a little bit about it. Uh, here's a video, this is not on your sheet, but um, this is a glass blowing studio where they're having like an event. And uh, I have, uh, I think COVID shut a lot of stuff down, but I know uh, we have a glass blowing studio in um, Benton Harbor and uh, they will, they, they did anyway, would have events where they would, uh, you know, make like bring people in. And I know in the winter they would, the Art Institute would send a group of students over to do a workshop and. A lot of times they would combine, they would make some kind of snow sculpture and then, you know, put hot molten glass on it and it you know, <laughs> makes all this steam and stuff. So they would do things that were, you know, meant to entertain you using glass. Um, there is also a glass studio in Kalamazoo where you can um, see glass blowing. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, looks, you know, looks like COVID restrictions are being lifted. So probably some of this will start up again. Um, but in Kalamazoo, you can go and see in the Park Trades building downtown, you can see glass blowing. And at Water Street Glass Works in downtown Benton Harbor, you can also go there and see uh, they do demos a lot because people do find it entertaining. It's nice at the Water Street one, the one um, in Benton Harbor, because it was an older building they restored that had been in disrepair. So the top floor had holes in it. So they actually uh, use that to their advantage and made like a, like the top floor has sort of like a catwalk, I guess you call it, um, so that you can stand above uh, the floor where they're doing the glass work and watch them because it is, if you get too close, it's kind of dangerous and, uh, you know, they've got molten glass that they're running around with. So um, I shouldn't say running around, they're being careful, but you have to keep your distance. And uh, if you can watch it from looking down on the next floor, you get a really good view. And um, and uh, at the art hops, when it's cold out, it, it's definitely, they have to keep the glass at around, in, around 2000 or something, it has to be molten all the time. So um, 
uh, it's a nice warming activity. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested, it's fun to watch. Uh, you check out the, the place in Kalamazoo or uh, place in Benton Harbor. There's a place in Valpo too, but I don't know. I don't think they do dem demonstrations. The others do. So here's some of the glass that they're playing with. Okay, this is our last artist, but not the least. This is Nitta. And they are a bunch of people who, uh, back to knitting, um, they do like graffiti knitting. So definitely watch their video and she talks about it. So here they are, instead of putting graffiti up on things, they like knit <laughs> things. So this post, when you're going into Manhattan, here's a tree that they covered with knitting steps. That was one thing, Magda, the person who started this, she said that, uh, you know, when she sees things that are really hard, she likes to add like a, like a soft touch to them. So here's this, uh, these steps that now have been warped up with knitting. Uh, this bus is in Mexico. I don't, it doesn't look like it because the writing looks, um, it doesn't look like it's from Mexico, but um, this uh, was in the Guinness Book of World Records and it's a bus covered in knitting. This is the video, so take a look at that. And that is the artist. So go back, I'll see, we'll go to the, we'll get to our page here. Oops, what's that? Okay, I have to still open these up. So this is not your view, but we'll go through this here. So here's your topic overview, the learning uh, task list, uh, the midterm you, I already gave you. I'm gonna give you an assignment on the blueprints and then uh, you have a chapter to read about art is entertainment in the book. So take a look, here's the videos. Um, uh, is this a video? I can't remember, oh my gosh, I don't remember. Here's Sam Taylor Wood, something about her. I think, I think it's a video. Um, and here is the sacrilege, the Jeremy Deller. Um, Jody Mack, the one where you can look at some of her videos. Definitely look at this Nick Cave video and the Nitta one also. So those are the materials to look at. And then we have an assignment besides the midterm. There we go. Well, let's see which this is. Oh, here's a, another blueprint. This is um, the Jetsons, a cartoon. You know, me, George Jetson. His dog, Astro. Another old one, but maybe, maybe you know that one. So. Modeling after Mark Bennett's television blueprints, consider a fictional architectural space from a favorite television show or movie and attempt to draw a blueprint of its interior. Attach a picture and create an essay that addresses the following questions with a minimum of 200 words. Most of you are good about the 200 words. Some of you um, don't quite get there. <laughs> so make sure it's 200 words. So what space did you choose and how often have you watched it? So uh, could be a movie, could be, um, you know, something from your childhood, like, like he picked out. Um, and did you have to watch it again to attempt this assignment? How challenging was it to get a comprehensive blueprint with the information you have? What were the easiest parts to complete and what areas of the space do you wish you had more information? Show your blueprint layout to someone who has seen the show or movie. Did they agree with the way, looks like there's two W, two thes in there. <laughs> Did they agree with the way you depicted it or were there uh, disputes or corrections? So uh, this, you'll need to do the 200 word writing and then also include uh, your drawing of your blueprint to get credit. So um, let's see what you come up with. Um, so that's your assignment, and um, uh, that's it for that's it for this week. So watch the videos, look, read the chapter, and um, you know, get your midterm in. And uh, that's it. Talk to you next week. Bye bye.